Hello and welcome to Warriors Football Fan TV. This is the top 10 players that I believe could have a major season next year. And I'm going to start at number 10 with Borussia Mönchengladbach's Connor Noss, an Irish underage international who, since the restart especially, has featured on the bench a few times for Mönchengladbach. Now they have qualified for the Champions League. I think that they're going to be using their squad a lot more next season. So it'll be interesting to see how the 19-year-old gets on. You know, does that mean he might get a call up for either Jim Crawford's under-21 team or will he be called up to Stephen Kenny's team? It's it's a very interesting one to kind of see how that plays out. Will he get the game time that he probably deserves? He's kind of a, a midfield, attacking midfielder, kind of second striker type player if you're to go by what transfer markets say anyway. Um, so he is definitely one to watch next season. Seems to be really highly rated. He's training with the first team all the time. And as I say, they're in the Champions League for next season. So, you know, I think that they'll be using their squad a lot more next season. So keep an eye out for him. Next up at number nine is Connor Coventry. The Connor is, was on loan at Lincoln from West Ham, but it's... um. It's it's evident to see like how good he was with the Ireland under twenty ones. What a player he can be, and if given the time, and I suppose you know being let play minutes, it's only going to help his development. He's twenty years of age, and I think now he needs to play as much football as possible for him. Maybe that's more from an Irish selfish point of view, but if you know, I'm led to believe from my contacts in West Ham fan TV that they really really rate. Connor Coventry and David Moyes is allegedly going to be investing a lot in youth for the next few seasons. So Connor Coventry may get a chance if someone from, um, I believe, Mark Noble's winding down a little bit. So they're maybe going to try and usher him out slowly out the door. So I think that's only going to be good news for Connor Coventry. And uh, watch the space for him because I really believe he's a top player. Number eight, Gavin Kilkenny at Bournemouth, who at the start of the season, especially pre-season, uh, really impressed Eddie Howe, and he was talking him up a lot. He ended up getting signed a new contract, I think. And, yeah, it just looked like he was going to get a bit of an opportunity this season. But he just hasn't really got two appearances in the EFL Cup and hasn't really done it. But I do think that Bournemouth are going to go down. Um, this, this video might backfire me if they don't. But I, I believe if they go down, it's only going to be beneficial for, for Gavin and his game time. I think he's... A quality player he's skillful you know he can get around the pitch and stuff like that and he's played a few times with the under 21s and you can see the impact he's made with them i know under 21 football isn't senior football but he's a very talented player and i'd like to see him get game time i think next season could, could prove to be a huge season for him especially if they go down to the championship and he's given a chance to be able to perform regularly you've seen players do it this season darrow shea for example so hopefully he's given the opportunity if they do go down. So don't call me on them going down just yet. But if they do go down, I do believe that he will have a, a really good season next year. And, um, you know, I think you should keep an eye on him. Number seven is Dara Leahy at Dundalk. He obviously signed from Bohemians. And a big deal was made of it because obviously um, he, he's, he was in the, nominated for player of the season at left back for two years in a row team of the season and when you're looking at around the league there's not many other top left backs available so why not sign the next best one and push Dane Massey to his limits and I think Daryl Lee he, he was coming off the back of a bad injury and they still signed him so I think that showed the faith that they had in him you know I remember him turning up in a leg cast when he first signed for them so I think Dara has the potential to to be an Ireland left back, you know, it depends on how much game time, what he does with Dundalk, you know, if, if Dundalk can go on a European adventure and he's the main left back, I mean, that's only going to bode well for him and the league. So I think that's definitely something exciting for him and Dundalk and Dundalk fans. Um, I suppose Irish fans in a way because he is a really exciting player. Um, Stephen Kenny had him in his under-21 team, brought him to the Toulon tournament. He's 22 now, so now is the perfect age to get him in and just make him that n number one spot. Um, I know Dane Massey won't give it to him easy, but that's probably just the competition that they don't need to kick on from here. So I think it's only going to be healthy competition for Dara. I think he's only going to get better. So again, keep an eye on Dara Leahy at Dundalk. Number six is Josh Cullen, who 
I only found out recently he's actually 24 years of age. So I think at this point in time, either Josh needs to get into the West Ham team or leave West Ham altogether because he's 24. International careers come and go, as well as football careers. And, you know, if he realistically wants to be an Ireland regular, he probably has about 10 years um, to be a regular from 24 to 34, usually in and around that, unless you're Glenn Whelan who surpasses that. But, um, you know, Josh... It was evident when he was taken out of the Charlton team through injury that, you know, the results just plummeted. And, you know, you could see how much they mean. He's obviously a quality player and just can't get into the West Ham team. But when he's played for Ireland, he's just looked really, really good. And I think if he wants to propel his international career, he needs to leave West Ham or else next season make sure that he's in that team. As I mentioned earlier on, Mark Noble's winding down. So I think between Coventry and Cullen, you know, and if Declan Rice leaves to go somewhere else, you never know what could happen to the two of them could be playing in midfield next season for West Ham. Um, again, you don't know where they'll be in the Premier League or the Championship at the time of making this video, so if they are to go to the Championship, that could be fantastic for for Cullen and for Coventry, but not obviously for West Ham. It could even be really good for Darren Randolph as well, but I think, you know, having those players play in the Premier League will obviously be more beneficial, I think, because uh, there's more of them in that team. But I think Josh Cullen has the ability, has the potential. I think next season will be definitely a career-defining season for Josh next year. Next up on my list is Jonathan Afalabi, who signed for Celtic at the start of the season after impressing with Ireland at the under-19 Euros in Armenia last year. He was in the team of the season, or team of the tournament, sorry, and... Yeah, he was just, he was really, really good. He, he became a free agent that summer. So he kind of had his pick of the clubs. He chose to join Celtic. Got injured towards the kind of start of the season. And he was just unlucky with injuries, really. I think um, he said himself, you know, as soon as he got in, he got injured. He couldn't really catch a break. And then he got his break then because he joined Dunfermline on loan. He played about six games for them, got two goals. And um, was starting to get amongst the goals. I know. He's, I think in the last game, game he played, he scored a penalty. And yeah, I just think he's been a little bit unlucky. I think next season will be a really big season for him. And and you know what? I think he could potentially get into that Celtic team if he starts pre-season well. Neil Lennon seems to be a big fan of his. He has, you know, he has the ability. He's right up there with Michael Obafemi in terms of ability. I mean, they both came through at the same time. I definitely could see. Uh, Jonathan getting either starting with Edward or Lee Griffiths next season maybe not up top on his own but definitely I think beside one of those two if he's if he's not going to go out on loan but I think either way he needs first team football next season and if he does you know he's 20 years of age I think we have yet to see the best of him so far and people talk about all the other strikers that we have I don't think he really gets in a mention in, in that category at the moment and I think next season he'll be right in that argument and, and hopefully he'll be pushing for a spot in Stephen Kenny's national team as well as Jim Crawford's under 21 team as well which would probably be a regular on that for the time being because you know we do have a, an abundance of young upcoming strikers which we'll go through in the rest of the list as well but for now Michael at number five okay number four Shamrock Rovers midfielder Jack Byrne who again Started the season so well and was just, you know, it was come, it came to a halt with the coronavirus. You know, everyone remembers, anyone who follows the League of Ireland, anyone who remembers the goal he scored against Dundalk, which just really, really set the the championship alight, I suppose, um, the title race. And, you know, he's just, since the start of the season, he was absolutely excellent. Obviously, from training with the Irish team and, and being amongst them, his confidence was absolutely sky high and he was coming into the, I think he had five games, three goals, you know, and maybe one assist as well. So, he has been absolutely flying and it's just so unfortunate for him because he was looking like he was going to have the season of his life and now we kind of come back, he's 13 games, um, you know, and then the season stops again, which is, which is really unfortunate. Will he be in Stephen Kenny's Nations League team who knows but I think next season is going to be a real make or break for Jack because there's a lot of people saying that you know he needs to go to England to become an Ireland regular and stuff like that I don't know if that is the case because Stephen Kenny 
seems quite loyal if players are playing well and he believes that they can bring contribute something to the team that he would probably have them in so that again is interesting if he did go to England I think it would be beneficial for him but again he likes being home he likes being able to go on golf whenever he wants he likes being able to be back with his family after kind of a lot of teenage years without his family um, he lost his dad quite young as well so that obviously would have had an effect on him and uh, he just seems to be enjoying life at the moment which I'm really happy to see because I know him personally and he's a, he's a great fella to be fair to him and you know I'd love to see him just if he does go back across the water uh, or stay here I just hope it's the right move uh, at the right time and they play the right football because Rover seems to be the, the club that he plays his best football at because everything goes through him and if he can stay at Rovers and do it happy days and, and maybe you know do something with Rovers in Europe like I said with Daryl Leahy and Dundalk now obviously it's going to be hard for Daryl because he plays left back but Jack is the heartbeat of that Shamrock Rovers team and they've quality and abundance there as well Um, I, I, I can't stress enough if you, if you get a chance to go and watch Shamrock Rovers this season I would definitely recommend it Um, and then moving on number three it's Michael Obafemi at Southampton uh, he's just he's had a, such a stop start season he's, he gets in Starts doing well, scores a couple of goals, then gets injured, and it keeps to be it keeps being an ongoing case with Michael. Unfortunately, he has, you know, eighteen Premier League appearances this year, and he's got three goals. Um, and he scored goals against the likes of West Ham, Chelsea, and Manchester United, the late equaliser. So he knows where the goal is against the big teams as well. Doesn't seem phased against bigger teams. Stephen Kenny's a massive fan of his, especially at the under twenty ones. He used to keep in contact with him quite regularly when he was under twenty one manager. And, you know, of all the players that are playing at the moment in the Premier League, Obafemi is the only one that's really scoring regularly on a, from a youngster's point of view. <laughs> I, I say three goals, and I say regular. But, as I mentioned, he's had a stop-start season, especially with the coronavirus that as well. You know, when we're coming up to the last international break, he was doing quite well. He was playing Ralph, ha Ralph Hasenhutl, sorry. Um, seems to be a big fan of his, and, and, and doesn't seem to really let him away with much which is what i think is the right thing to be doing for him at the moment i think he needs to mature a little bit and i think ralph hasenhutl is the right manager for him and i think maybe next year he could get the like a real good tune out of obafemi and the fact that they've his irish teammates knocking around now with smallbone and shane long and even will ferry they've got a good strong irish core there and he just seems to be enjoying life at Southampton. He seems to love the club. He seems to love the manager. Although I'd say at times their relationship can be a bit funny. Uh, because he's probably a very, very demanding coach. But he only wants the best from his team. And you can see how he gets results. I think Michael, next season, you know, he should be aiming to finish the season with at least 10 goals. 10, uh, 10 Premier League goals. And Southampton, I think, I predict next season will be really good. So that's what I feel about Michael. On to number two, and Troy Parrott. I think with Troy, it's a case of just is it, it look and just it, yeah, it's just it's difficult with Troy because he, everyone wants to see him do well. So much hype around him, and he's played two Premier League games and he's been sub, came on a sub for both of those games. And if you're kind of looking at his record, then at I mean he's 18 years of age. Okay, he's made two Premier League sub appearances. But in the Premier League, too, he's made two appearances, scored three goals. And then in the UEFA Youth League, he scored six goals in four appearances as well. So he knows where the goal is. And he's obviously been capped by Mick McCarthy at international level, playing against New Zealand, and was in the squad against Denmark as well. Obviously, he has talent there. There's been some off-field issues that you know Mourinho has addressed and gone on holidays when he probably should have stayed back. At Spurs training ground to get extra training in, especially at a time when Son and Harry Kane and Lamella, I think, were all injured, and he probably should have been number one. But Lucas Moura was playing a striker because he just seemed like he couldn't trust Troy that much. So he's 18 years of age now, and um, he'll be going into next season, I imagine, with the head down. You, you'd hope he's going in with with the head down and really hoping that he can make a difference for Spurs and for his career because I think it's going to be a big summer for Spurs in terms of the transfer market and if he doesn't get in with Spurs does he go out on loan and if so who does he go on loan to because I think he needs first team football he has the ability he can score goals 
And uh, if you can score goals in a team, it'll fast track you in any way. I think he mentioned that before when he got called up to the Ireland team, the fact that he was scoring goals so freely that he was called up to the team. So I think he's young and fearless and he just needs to be, you know, I think he just needs the the shackles to be let off him and let him have a, a season. First team, men's football and see how he gets on. At number one, it's Adam Ida for Norwich City. He's 19 years of age, and for me, he's the most exciting of all our strikers. He just has such a big, powerful um, way about him. He's quick, he's fast, he's big, he's strong, he can head the ball. He has unbelievably quick feet, and I just think he just hasn't been given the game time that he's probably warranted. I look at Puki, I look at Dermich, and they haven't done anything, especially since the restart. Um, obviously, during the season, Puki was brilliant. So I can understand why he wasn't getting in then. But now, I think the fact that they're relegated now, I think he should be getting in game time for the end of the season. It's 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 mad that he just won't play him. It's not like they're playing for any points or anything like that. And at the same time, you know, when he has been given chances starting, I mean, he scored a hat-trick against Preston. And is he any worse than what they have there at the moment? Should they not be looking at him for next season and looking at him as being the main man? And that's why I have him at number one. I think if... Um, he's given the game to him. I think next season could be a huge season for him. And I think if he hits the ground running with Norwich and he's scoring regularly in the championship, I think he could fire them back up to the Premier League. I think he's a really, really good player. And I think if he doesn't get them up to the Premier League, I think he'll get a transfer and another club will come in for him. But he just really, really looks the real deal. Um, he just needs to add goals to his game, but he also needs to get full games to be able to score goals. Um so next season is going to be a huge season for him, I think. And it's really exciting if you go through the list there that I've made up. Um, you know, all this, there's more players on that list that probably are unlucky not to make this top 10. Like Aaron Connolly, Jason Knight, Jason Malumbi, all these types of players. But I've, I've done other videos and I featured them in it. So I just said I'd do another one. So let me know your thoughts in the comments on this video. And don't forget to like the video and don't forget to subscribe and uh, give me your thoughts in the comments and um, would you change the list or would you change where people are placed on the list let us know your thoughts in the comments thanks for watching i'll speak to you soon god bless